camera over here. We're fully filming. San Diego didn't let us film. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to be like everywhere, right? Awesome. I'm um, Hey, Connecticut? Uh, my wife's in Jersey. All right. So, uh, yeah, welcome to Maddie Blues in New York Comic Con. I'm going to jump right into the slide because I want to leave as much time for Q&A as possible so we can answer your guys' questions. we got a great guest from the Four Horsemen here. we got C.J. and Eric. So we got some cool reveals, some cool updates for you, and uh, let's just jump right in. All right. First off, we're going to do an update on DC, on our signature series, Plug and Paint Earth. You're welcome. <laughs> I know a lot of fans have been asking what's going to go on now that the club didn't go through. We only did about 60% of the minimum we needed. Then we need to put in detail and then it's a great set of interviews with Daniel Pippen, an action figure insider. I think the second interview is up on the homepage today. Uh, so go there, you can get the whole thing. We kind of go into the full details. Uh, this is why you should shut your phone off you know, while you're uh, on the panel. All right, so let's talk about six and monthly figures still coming out this year. We still have a club this year to come out. So you guys know that Ocean Masters yeah. is up in a couple days. Got his staff, long awaited. I think this is actually only the second build we've done for Aquaman, right? Now finally, Ocean Master is long lost brother. And then, of course, Rage is coming out. Yeah. He's got his sword, the great reuse of that buff body from back in the Clark Kent in 07. And then finally finishing up the year is our only Batman variant, Bat Zorro, who comes with this uh, Bat Ray. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about 2014. So we obviously know the sub didn't go through. We only had about 60%. But we are looking to release some stuff. So here's what's going on. You guys are getting the full scoop. So subscription didn't need the middle. But as the signature series heads into the sunset, what we're going to do is release those final four figures quarterly in 2014. So we were able to secure four figures that made it far enough along in the process. They're going to be day of only, so no sub, at $25. And please note, this is not a relaunch or a new program, but really the capstone on a great eight-year run of DC Systems figures from the Four Horsemen. So as these figures roll out, this is really the finale. Even if these guys sell, you know, quote-unquote gangbusters, this is it, guys. This is this is basically what we could do without locking in the sub. Moju fans, please note this next year when we sell in that 2015 sub. We're not like just, you know, shooting areas. All right, so you don't probably know who these figures are, but to recap, you're going to get Aquaman in March. Followed by Ice. She will be out in June. Like I said, quarterly, since we have four figures. Followed by Superboy. Honor in his, uh, his black shirt before the, uh, the big reboot. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with Dan. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I know there were people asking if we release them all on the same day. Really, it's kind of one of those, like, you know, two sides of the same coin thing. People are complaining in October, there's too many things up. So it's like, do you release them all at the same time and get back, or do you spread them out? So really, we need to come up with a program, and this was the way to do it. But wait, we're not done. We are also at Comic-Con. <laughs> yes. We will have... Did they gain the Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, I know. We couldn't quite get to the bigger one because of the uh, sub, but I wanted to. he's far enough along so you will be able to get, I don't think there's ever been a toy of Containment Suit Doomsday, ever. ever. Right? Yeah. So there you go. We're doing Containment Suit Doomsday. He's badass. So he'll get Comic Con, and then after the show, much like all of our Comic Con items, on MaddieCollector.com in August. All right. Total Heroes, so this is our new line that's going to be in retail in 2014. It's an all-new six-inch scale, featuring the major DC heroes and villains at retail. So these are being launched at a $9.99 SRP. 
So you've seen, uh, I think, the first six or seven characters in our proof characters like Batman and Superman, Sinestro's in there. This is the really cool one is the Priest. The, the ultra figures for this line that we announced in San Diego are coming on Maddie Collector at twenty dollars. So they're going to be plussed up with things like swappable heads, extra accessories and pants, <coughs> collector ring characters, including the Comic Con 2013 fan pick Batman Beyond, which was going to be in the PowerPoint, but it was just delivered to the booth about three minutes ago. So he'll be in the booth, not the PowerPoint. Uh, and they'll all be in plus up package. There'll be four figures released quarterly, much like the signature series, but probably a different one. Throughout 2014, so these will complement what you're going to get a retail. <coughs> so here we got our first one, our Green Lantern Core figure. So you'll get a John Stewart head, you will get a Tomar Ray head, and you'll get a Green Ant head with a whole bunch of extra hands. You'll get flying hands, you'll get uh, battle hands, <coughs> fist hands, and uh, kind of like a chopping hand. And then you'll get three different construct end pieces, and then a construct uh, energy weight. So all three of those, the fist, the buzzsaw, and the claw, will all connect to that little energy wave. They'll be in clear plastic. Here we'll see a prototype that's just flat green. But it will be in the traditional kind of, you know, you see with other constructs we've done, in that really cool, all clear green plastic. So this will be in Q1 2014. This is going to follow up with our next release is Black Manta. Yeah. Yeah. So he's also going to come with three heads. I'll have a masked head, an unmasked head, and an angry unmasked head. <laughs> and we'll have a whole bunch of other hands and your stamp accessories that actually splits apart. So you can see the stamp can be configured in multiple different ways to display them. Is that like a clean wall in there? So I guess black, black, uh, black man is so great. So there you go, so Black Mantle will be for a two figure for our, our Ultra Total Heroes line. And I don't have an image, but the next one is going to be the Fan Choice Back and Beyond. I couldn't quite sneak one in there, but you'll see the sculpt that was just delivered. It will be in the booth right after the panel. Fully painted paint. Fully painted, so yeah, you want to talk about what's like included? Um, it comes with the Batman Beyond head, it comes with Terry McGinnis head, a mask of course, and it comes with cool. the old man Bruce Wayne head, so you can this ass down there. It also comes with multiple hands, and it comes with the Batwing backpack and uh, Batman Beyond style Batarang. Yeah, and so yeah, the, old, the old Bruce Wayne head for, for all you kids at home, that was from I think the first episode of Batman Beyond, yeah. the old Bruce Wayne wears the outfit before he passes it on to Terry, so, so that's why the uh, old Bruce Wayne is there. So there you go. So you'll see him in the booth. All right. For our Batman 66 line, uh, oh, I'm uh, sorry, it also comes with a little, um, it's not Adam, what's his name in Batman Beyond, the little Adam character? Oh, yeah. uh, Mike Ron. Uh, Mike Ron. 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 No, no, that's, that's important stuff right there, right from the horse's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I stayed up all night. <laughs> all right, so the uh, 66 line is specifically the epic creation items, not the figure line. That's a retail one. Um, so just a uh, quick update on that awesome, awesome utility belt. So you've seen this in the group. Uh, we've got, that's the final product we're getting to. It's going to be coming out December the Four working houses are open from the bottom, just like on the show. Four working tubes also open from the bottom. It includes that foldable batarang with the hole for the, for the string. $125 day up, so it'll be December 15th, uh, 2013. And you can finally, after 40 years, have an Adam West 1966 batarang. One size fits most. <laughs> Some comic book guy, I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, I'm a sober heart gets that belt. All right, Watchmen, we're wrapping up the Watchmen line. Our final release there, so this was the first ever, ever comic book based Watchmen line. All six figures have been shipping throughout 2013. Uh, they include accessories, Watchmen bases. You know, there were six figures every other month at $25. It's not a, you know, both in the sub and day up. And the role I included all six of the main characters. So we got Ozzy coming out, and he comes with that great alternate head with the mask on. So he will be the final Watchmen figure. There's not a Watchmen line in 14, 
But you get all of them. You get, you get to complete the team, even the, even the dead ones. So uh, <laughs> there it is with a close-up of his head. So you'll be able to finally, and of course when you have all the packaging, um, if you guys have them, you've seen that they actually can be displayed in multiple ways. Uh, one direction you can see the who watches the Watchmen graffiti. Another direction from the front you can see the ticking down doomsday clock. And then on the other flip side is original art created by Mattel artists uh, that uh, showing kind of signature items from each character. I think my favorite is comedian. Even though we didn't have the rights to do a happy face, that's, uh, the symbol is actually owned by somebody. But uh, the artwork sort of has uh, bullets, all comedians packaging the, the bullet marks kind of make a little happy face. So that's kind of how we got around that. Or tell you. All right. Just kidding. It's all right. Ghostbusters. So you have an update on Ghostbusters. Uh, so first off, the remaining customer service stock are our awesome Ecto goggles. We have a few left. We wanted to make sure we, you know, we held on to them from our sale in uh, August. So those are going to go up on sale on Cyber Monday, whatever's left. And that's it. That's the last call on the, on the goggles. And who, who's got goggles in it? Who got them? What do you guys think? You like them? You happy? Yeah. I can do it. All right. Well, you can test them out in our, in our booth. We have them there if you'd like to see what it's like. It shows really cool. It works with your PK meter. You can activate the library ghost with the PK meter, um, as well as a proton line animation. And of course, it's on the four Slimer animations you get, whether or not to. Again, one size fits most. Uh, this one was actually, a lot of people are asking the way the straps are, because they're not 100% accurate to the movie. That's a legal issue. Um, we had, I actually did a podcast a month or so ago with ghostbesterfans.net, and we addressed this, this concern, and really, because it fits on your head, anytime that we have something made by Mattel that slips over someone's head and blocks your vision, there's very strict safety protocols. So that's why the straps are done the way they are, to comply with US and European safety rules. Uh, and it also includes some really, really cool stickers that you can customize it. So for those of you who are freeze framers and been watching the Ghostbusters film, you know that in every shot, it doesn't actually accurate one shot to another. Some shots look different. So you can customize your goggles for however you want to do it, uh, which whatever stickers. And it includes those cool, those cool little uh, knobs you see at the bottom of the sticker sheet. Those uh, allow you to, to make it look like Ghostbusters movie one, movie two, or that final knob on the left plugs into the PK meter and is what syncs the PK meter to your goggles so that you can see the library. Hey, we did that. All right. So, and then coming in December is our Proton wand, the Neutrino wand. Did you guys test this out of the booth upstairs? Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. It was really, those sounds, the way it powers up. I mean, they're just taken right from the film archives. It is amazing. We did change the front wire to red. You're seeing the green wire, the prototype there. Even though both were in the movie, we did change the, the more favored red light. It's got lighting sound, it's got a rumble spot, it's got power on and off. It's got a stream on and off visual meter. It's got a length adjuster, so that increases the uh, rumble and the velocity of it. Yep. And if you have two PK meters, which is more, two proton ones, neutrino ones, which is what we brought to the show, if you aim them at each other, you get a really cool crossing the streams effect. Uh, the, the lights turn white, and the little meter that's on the back of the wand, instead of going up, it starts kind of flashing up and down, up and down, to show you you're probably doing something that's destroying the dimensional rift. So that's really, really cool effect that only works if you have two of them. So really nice payoff. And that will also be on sale December 15th. Big day, December 15th. Save your shuttles. <laughs> and we did make it so potentially it could plug into a hypothetical Ecto pack. I definitely want to make it clear we do not have an Ecto pack planned right now, but you'll notice there is a hole on the back of the wand that potentially, if we ever did an Ecto pack, it would be able to plug in with the idea that the pack would amplify the sound or the speaker or something like that. So, you know. If you're holding off on getting the proton wand, anticipating getting a pack and wand one day, I would highly recommend not doing that because I can tell you we, we already have our 2015 line kind of in the works and there's not a proton pack in that year, um, depending on what happens to the movie. But uh, don't hold off on this one. I think this is probably going to be our fastest selling Ghostbusters epic creation. So it, it's really amazing. I can't stop playing that. All right. And then coming in 14, for the 30th anniversary. So we had that uh, pre-sale for the Ecto-1, much like the DC sub. Unfortunately, we did not get enough 
pre-sales to do it. So the Ecto-1, I can say officially, is not happening. Uh, you guys saw it, I mean, you saw the meter. We were pretty clear that if we did not get 100%, it wasn't gonna go forward. And once again, Motu fans, keep that in mind for 2015. We are not just, you know, throwing darts here and, and you know, puffing smoke. So the Ecto-1 is not gonna go forward. We did not get the minimum pre-order we needed. But to celebrate that 30th anniversary, we are gonna put out those two packs of the six inch figures without the proton or with the removable packs. You get, so it'll be the first time they've ever been available like that. All the figures will include stands and a proton screen. So there'll be two, two packs at $50 each. That's about $25 a figure. Uh, when we showed these with the Ecto-1, they were gonna be single carded figures and you were only gonna get Ray and Peter. So now we're at, to celebrate, we're gonna do full, all four of them. So you get Ray and Egon, Peter and Winston, each pack will come with two proton streams, two bases, two figures, and two removable proton packs. So they have newly tuned torsos, excuse me, that allow the proton packs to be removable. So those are gonna be on sale late summer, early fall, 2014, in celebration of the 30th anniversary of the greatest ghost hunting movie ever. I'm really excited. So there you go, that's, that will be the celebration of the 30th, and we're all kind of standing by to see what happens with uh, Ghostbusters 3 and the further adventures of the franchise to be continued. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fans of the room? Yes! Yeah. 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 All right. So let's just run through the remainder of 2013 for a reminder for everyone in the room and the kids at home. <laughs> so uh, we got an antenna coming out of that. Yes! Yeah. 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 Perfect, awesome. Almost a fully told figure. I think the only new parts of Rich of reused parts are hands. Otherwise, he's fully new tool. So he's going to have two sets of eyeballs. They'll have uh, regular eyes and then the uh, antenna pop out eyes that just snap in place, recreating the vintage feature without having to have a mechanism. And of course, his trademark cord crossbow. So he, he was originally the, the uh, September figure, but he got delayed a little bit, so you're gonna get two figures in October. We announced this way back, I think, in February and March, so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. The other figure in October, which was always the monthly figure there, is Dactus. Yeah, yes. So you can see the final figure, this is still a permanent image, but you'll see the uh, final figure in the case. Anything you guys wanna mention about? I'm going kinda so quickly, but you guys haven't talked about it already? Or? He's a huge figure. That was uh, what caught us off guard. And then we got into it. Uh, with the extra, he's got extra height with the net and extra height with the, the bigger feet. So uh, he really towers over the other figures. And then plus, he's got the great old man minis, which are already massive. So it's really impressive looking lined up with the rest of the figures. He's actually so big that we had to pack his armor off of him in the package, sort of like Webster, uh, because it, you know, it was basically pressing against the blister and then deforming it. So that's why you've got to make a chest and you get it in the blister. This is but, just another play feature. You get to play dress up with him. There you go. <laughs> just like a certain blonde doll. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, it really, I mean, obviously really easy to snap together. You just pull off the head, you slip on the armor, snap it together, plug in the wings on the back, and everything with his sword, and he's ready to defend Subtonia from the evil forces of Skeletor. All right. So also in October, so if you, if you have a, who has a Club Filmation subscription in the room? Yeah. Very excited. We finally, after years, got nice to the filmation character. So we got Neptu coming in October, in a few days. That scan is not included. That's just something to show it. But obviously, the the, the uh, <coughs> classified version of Zor that he comes with from the episode uh, will work on any of the burn stands. If, if you have a weapons pack or Tila or Evil Lair or the Sorceress, and it came with a burn stand, and it'll come with his Hunk of Power. And then also in October, not part of the club, day of, you get the final weapons pack in the line. They come with a lot of great accessories, some repaints and some laser locks, some repaints accessories that were uh, from Gramir, and gold, you got Strobo's all new gun. You've got Hurricane, Hordax accessories in Trapjaw colors. You've got Trapjaw's accessories in Roboto colors. You have a variety of shields, one of them's upside down. And Strobo's gun is all like warped with that too. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like that on the final. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, and then of course, the <laughs> 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 action 
right here in the back, which is really articulated in the neck and in the hands. Um, pretty cool is the filmation colors and it looks right out of filmation. So it's vintage toy filmation look. It's pretty cool. Alright, so that's the end of wars, but then it's really the final weapons pack that we're doing. I know a lot of you are going, yeah, I know I hear you, but the reason that we're not doing another weapons pack, you guys have seen what's going on with prices. I mean, you know, the gentleman to my left here talked about, you know, in terms of like gotten chocolates in their own lines, how expensive it is to be making these toys. That doesn't just apply to what the horsemen do. That applies even more so to what Mattel does. These prices go up like almost every day. We are trying to basically put all of our resources into making as many figures as we can over the next two years before these figures cost forty dollars a pop. Because one day they're going to. And you know, people always ask, what's gonna kill the line? You know, et cetera, et cetera. Is it gonna be, you know, you know, Neptu or Bat Zaro? It's gonna be the fact that eventually these figures are gonna to cost more to make than you guys are all willing to pay. So the reason we're not doing any more weapons packs is because we're taking that energy and putting it into figures to get as many characters out there before the price just gets too expensive because we see it happening. It's on the horizon. All right, and then finally, also in October, as part of the regular club, our last quarterly release on those amazing work troopers. <laughs> But that's okay, you saw. So horde troopers, they come with uh, two of each accessory. Uh, you guys have seen it before, so I don't need to dwell. Too much of are also coming in November, so he's the quarter, he's the monthly figure for November. He's a fan's choice, so he won that vote he did last year. Comes with his battle axe and the secret liquid, a li secret liquid of life, right from the vintage mini comic. By uh, Peter the Fool that doesn't buy Gildor. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's everyone knows like the, the Movember, the, the mustache contest. Some folks have helped uh, challenge me to grow a Gildor during November, so I'm happy. Go for it. My wife All right. Also in November, there's a sticker sheet, but this is only for subscribers. So if you buy Gildor day of, you will not get this, but if you do have a subscription, you're going to get a really cool sticker sheet with more stickers to help customize your figures. And then as part of Club Filmation, Seahawk, long, long dude. Uh, one thing I want to address about Seahawk that's come up a lot is people asking you know, why he looks a bit more buffed up than he did on the animated series. And the simple answer is he's not based on Filmation. All the figures in the classic side are based on what the toys would look like had they been released in, a, in the Vintage Masters of the Universe line. Same that way the New Adventures figures are you know, more buffed up than like, you know, the super skinny look. Or the same way the Princess of Power figures in the Vintage line were dolls versus Tila, Sorceress, and Evil Lynn. You know, a little bit weren't dolls, they were action figures. So had there been a hypothetical Seahawk figure released in the Masters of the Universe, not the Princess of Power like Bo was, line in the vintage era, he would have you know, he would have used the standard Motu body. That's why he looks like this. All the characters, so even if a character never had a release in the vintage line, be it you know a Dalmatian character like Seahawk, or a character that never even existed in the vintage line like Drago Man, or you know, or a Princess of Power or a new adventures character, the way when we make them with you know we sort of reverse engineer them and think about them first, what they would have looked like had they been a vintage Masters of the Universe character in the 82 to 87 line, and then update them in the classics. So that's why you're seeing him using that standard buffed up he man buff, as opposed to he was a little bit skinnier in Prince of the Power series. And as announced when we sold in the Filmation sub, when we showed that unpainted sword, we said that the owner of that sword will not be available in day up. So we're in 2013. So we're holding true to that for you sub holders, so you will only be able to get City Off if you are a Club Filmation subscriber in 2013. All right, Castle, so it's going to start shipping in the yeah. Comic-Con, uh, Comic I think, a toy fair. Uh -oh. What's that? <laughs> that's 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 Final. That's actually full production. Um, the pawn comes out. 
Now, uh, we weren't sure if the pawn was going to be able to come out. The uh, skulls on the reverse, let's see, we got a reverse angle here, I think. Uh, at the top of the elevator can pop off. And guys, I'm sorry, but seriously, shame on New York Comic Con guests for stealing the skulls last Are night. Wait, what? what? The skulls were stolen, a horde trooper was stolen, and He Man's oh. sword was stolen last night. <laughs> We had this out at San Diego Comic Con and Power Con, and not a single thing walked off. Last night, four items were walked off. New York. New York. Yeah, you got the keep putting out toys in an open area for you to play with it. Please don't steal them. Because now, for the rest of New York Comic Con, those skulls aren't on there. So you're going to see two little nubs upstairs. Which because, stinks, because yeah. I don't know if you guys know it or not, those little skulls on the top of the elevator shaft, you pop those off and you can actually pop them on figures too. So yeah. you got like a little yeah. golden skull. We, we do our best to keep an eye on it, but while like my back was turned, somebody snapped them off last time. Someone also, we had a Ford Trooper out there that you guys could play with, and someone stole that. Parish, go ahead and pull out of your pocket. So yeah, guys, we, we really put a lot of trust in the fans. That's why we put the castle out there and it's open. We want you to play with it. And unfortunately, we don't, we don't also don't have the swords. You can't open the jawbreaker anymore. So please don't steal our stuff. We're sorry, it's Scott. Mistakes. It, it's not, I mean, I got one back at the office, but you guys aren't going to get to play with it now and see it. So that's that's what I feel bad for. So just stop stealing our stuff. <laughs> well, okay. if, if, if you did indeed, you know what I mean? Yes, whoever, whoever's out there selling those, those skulls on eBay. <laughs> we won't find you. We will find you. Untaro will find you. Did you get back in? The jetpack so far has not been taken. So hopefully, hopefully everything else will stay for the rest of the show. Batros is not included, but he's in a staff of the stand. Come with the pegs and you can a new way to display the figures. And then in December, we'll know what this boy uh, there he is, we've got Skeletor Dax from Diamond Ray of Disappearance, as well as a repaint of Webster's gun, kind of a more spacey color. Blendor's awesome. What do you guys think of Blendor? Yeah. 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 Star Wars owes us a big money, we beat up to it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and then also in December in Club Filmation, you're going to get Strong Arm Lore. Strong Arm. Yeah, we, uh, you much like, I mean, I'm sure you guys are aware of this for now, by now, a lot of times the vintage names aren't available. Uh, you know, I, I think Acarius, a flip shot, was owned by Nerf. Uh, I don't know who owns Strongarm, but either way, we did mention, I think, Strongarm on the bio, like his nickname, but he's Strongarm. We just had to call the boy Strongarm. People, I, I always see people putting up, like, an epic fail, because, like, without the name of Strongarm, it's a legal issue. What are you going to do? That's an epic fail that somebody took the name of Skull up. <laughs> and then he'll uh, include uh, the gun from, oh, it was the Tila episode. Shoot, what was the name of the episode? I got the name of Trouble with someone now? No? No? Alright, I'm not the only one who can't name the episode off the top of me. What? Yeah, you get, you get the shrinking gun. I can't remember the name of the episode. I know it's only people in Tila. Okay, 14! Okay. Alright, so 14 happened! You guys made it happen! <laughs> Yeah. So now a thing about 14 and 15, I will note, is they're kind of two sides of the same coin. So like I mentioned earlier, prices are going up every day. It, you know, just cost, you know, it, it, toys are tied into the price of petroleum, because toys are made from petroleum. And as the price of gas goes up and raw materials, so do the cost of these toys. That's why we made the promise, you know, when we sold in the 13 line, it was still part of the original robust roadmap, take a drink, that we wanted you reorganize the roadmap, which we did, to get all the main vintage figures out there as quickly as we could. And that was going to be done, oh, we couldn't do it in one year, there was too many. But we did do it over 14 and 15. When we did 14, I will tell you, originally we kind of front-loaded it with, with kind of, we weren't sure if 15 would happen, so we wanted to make sure like the most important figures happened in 14. But then when we sat down and we, we, we mapped out the 15 line, which we did a few weeks ago, uh, kind of around PowerCon, when the horsemen were visiting, we kind of looked at it and we're like, wow, 15 is like actually even stronger than 14. Um, yeah. So we're, we're, we really kind of, even though they're going to be separate subscriptions to buy, 14 and 15 are kind of like 
but they're kind of like the sequels to The Matrix or Pirates of the Caribbean, except oh, good. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not like plot-wise, but the way, you know, like Matrix 2 and 3 are sort of one long movie, or Pirates 2 and 3 are sort of one long movie, they're kind of meant to be watched together, you can't really watch one, not the other. That's what I mean. I don't mean they're, you know, weird ghost guys running around. Um, and fish people. But, you know, so, when, so 14 and 15 are sort of reflections of each other. So, you know, Adjulak is in 14, so you can kind of guess who's in 15. Yay. You know, you're, there's two snake men left, so probably one of them's in 14, one of them's in 15. So they were really thought of together. So by the time we get to the end of 15, <coughs> you're going to have a really complete collection. It doesn't mean the line is over and, you know, everything's going to in 16. I have no idea what's going to happen in 16. It's going to be a year from now before we're even looking at that. But I can definitely tell you by the end of 15, should that have to be the end, you're going to feel like the line, you know, you guys, you know, we kind of know sort of who we're doing. You guys can get it back. Absolutely. But like I said, I mean, that we, when we saw that 15 lineup, I, because I, you know, I did Google that time, I don't know, when we were trying to sell the sub, and I was, was talking about how 14 was such a strong year, and we were surprised by that, but then to see 15, it, it is possibly even stronger. It's definitely as strong as 14, if not stronger. I think it might be a little bigger. Yeah, maybe too. We were surprised there were that many semi-top tier characters left to do, so. Yeah, I think everybody's going to be very satisfied by the I was a little concerned that it was going to be a little light. It was going to be kind of like slumming along on gas to the finish line. But yeah, it's not. There's it's some, some very cool surprises in there, too, that like we weren't expecting when we saw what was in the 15th line. There's some cool little, little unexpected items in there as well that you may not think of initially, but they really make a lot of sense and makes it even feel more complete. So guys, when we sell those subs next summer at San Diego Comic Con, we did this rodeo before. You know, you, you know what you get. So yeah, we, we need both years to finish this up. And it, the both years are going to be incredible. All right. Without further ado, let's let's get to the stuff. So 14. We, you know, there's 12 monthly figures. You've seen this in San Diego at Power Con. You have 12 figures of $25 or 27 day on four quarterly items, which could be things like variants, oversized figures, multi packs. This is our sort of slot to do things beyond a basic figure, um, noting that all 12 monthly are original figures, not variants. The four quarterly items, one will be 25 or 27 day of, two will be 38 or 42 day of, uh, one will be 40 or 44 day of, that's Modulock, uh, and Battle Line is one of those 38, so now you guys know there's one $38 item and one 25 left, you do the math. One holiday item, which will be included in the sum, which will be $35, so that's a very unique item and a unique price point. One club exclusive figure, the sign up, which is paid for by the sign up fee, which you guys have already signed up because the club's done. One exclusive map, and the club was not gonna include convention items, chase figures, you know, liquid war axe, potential vehicles, potential weapons, well, we're not gonna do a weapon pack, I can say that, another standalone item. So, the, you know, and I know people say we want everything in the sub, the reason we need to have these non-sub items is we need the freedom to grow or shrink the line as needed based on the ebb and flow of business. You know, if we feel like, oh, we could do, you know, I'm making this up, a, a green granite or a I'm announcing a green granite, I'm just using this example. Um, we can already see the asthmatic questions. Uh, you know, we need, we need to have the creative freedom to do things like that. So that's, you know, because we don't know if we're gonna do a green granite, but we might decide in three months, oh, we need to slot something in and that, that's why it's not included in the sub. All right, and we already we reopened the sub for a couple days there in September. Um, and we got, we, we're now at 120%, so we're now back to what we were in, uh, in 13, so. Yeah! All right, January. So you guys have seen these already, too bad. The personal favorite of this gentleman on my left. He was a long overdue. Glimmer. I want to get to the new stuff. Um, in March, Hydra and Boo or Hydron? Yeah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> this is like, we're not, we're not doing like Staghorn and like Kao here. Like again, I mean, this is like, you know, major, you know, 
What? <laughs> All right, we got a new adventure hater in the round. All right, uh, in Q1 of 2014, uh, you got to see Mind It On. So he's going to configure a lot of different ways. He does come with two different hail sections, just like the vintage figure. I don't think we had that second hail section out until this show. I don't know why. But he does have that. So it'll be $40 or 44 day of. Here's a look at some of the other variations, the other ways you can connect in. Lots of cool, fun, awesome, <laughs> Maju locking fun. I love Maju locking as a kid. All right, our traveling con figure, so that means here in New York, if you guys are here in New York Comic Con, next year, you will be the hero of the one, the only go there. Woo! So these guys have a very special staff there. That's the staff of Avion from the mini comic. Um, and we were able to get the little hook on there so that Stratos can hold it properly. You're going to see this a lot in 2014 and 15. We're going to do our best, you know, as we kind of wrap things up, to get out a lot of those accessories you guys have been asking for. And even if the accessory doesn't necessarily relate to the character it comes with, it really doesn't matter, right, guys? Yeah, you're cool with that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So we're going to try to get out as many of these cool accessories as possible even if they work with older figures or even future figures. So, Goat Man comes with the uh, Sam and Baby on there. All right, in March, we've got that unnamed one. So you will find out what he looks like when he leaks on eBay or shows up in the numbers. So he will be shipping in March of 2014 with that new mini comic, which I hope it's the soft belt with the map too. So there's the map of Horde Empire. Uh, I know Eric's got a planet in there. So, but he's got a vacation, he told me. So you'll, you guys saw the map of PowerCon, like in full detail? Yes? Yes. Kelly did. <laughs> and then that mini comic. So Axel did the mini comic. It's only available with our club figure, the unnamed one. Uh, so Axel did the interior art. He made in Skeletor, their final battle. The fall of Eternia, stop here. Uh, so there we have uh, the two uh, light up figures and by the way, if you guys have never seen the light, the light up figures in person, we just filmed a segment with Toy Hunter uh, where they brought them in and we have them on display in our booth along with a vintage Titus package, which was awesome. Are you trying to vote for all these We were down here. All right. Uh, there's a sneak peek at the first panel there. We took the dialogue out. You don't know what they're saying, but they're saying cool things. So that's the very first panel. All right. In April? Yes! Well, yes. 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 it's always so great. Yes. Anthony's very excited too. So uh, you'll see a close, it's not fully production, but you'll always see a, a, a plastic version of it in the case. Um, see how he's articulated and all that. Anything you guys want to say on Blade? I mean, I'm doing all the talking. Fine, Blade. <laughs> 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 Better him than Gwildor. Do you guys want Gwildor? Yeah. Don't ever do Gwildor is what you're saying. Yeah. Hack it! Well, let us go. So, Scorpia, so you'll see a, a closer to production model in the case. So the, uh, the, um, the crossbow clips onto her arm, obviously because she can't hold it due to the fact that she doesn't have fingers. Uh, but she does have those awesome claws, which I know Carla Marsh has those earrings. And uh, comes with that tail that's articulated just like whiplashes at that uh, turning base. Anything you guys want to join in on Scorpia? Yeah, does the uh, handle fit into her hand? No, no, clips. Oh, it clips on her, on her wrist. Yeah. Oh, is that not how you guys designed it? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I guess it's actually. She can hold stuff and it will claw, so she can decide this was a little bit of a Maybe it was just a safety thing. Yeah. When it came to EBC, probably didn't hold a stone enough. That does happen. You know, yeah. A lot of times, you know, this is actually a really good segue. When you see things like this, this is the horse prototype you're looking at. When you translate an unarticulated prototype into an articulated figure, there are just things that have to change. You know, it sounds like one of those was the way the crossbow was going to attach. I'm not always privy to that when design does these things. No, so, I mean, because it goes from a, actually they are, all, all the figures we do are fully articulated. And they just get engineered to where 
they're structurally sound when you get them. We do all the articulation at the Four Horsemen Studios. But the problem is we have we do them in uh, hard urethane casted plastic, which is you can't play with that stuff. You'll end up breaking it. And it gets transferred into a PVC, which is kind of a, a softer plastic, and ABS, which is a real hard plastic. And when that happens, things like balance come into issue because sometimes things don't stand the same way when they're a solid um, urethane plastic as they do when they're partially hollow ABS and solid PVC. And things like uh, if they had to change the, the handle for the crossbow for that, when it, that hand becomes PVC rather than that hard urethane plastic, it's probably too small and too soft to hold that handle so they change to a clip. So I'm so seeing that now, yeah, you can see it. Out of, yeah. yeah, so instead of a peg, it gets clipped and clips on this. And that's really something that you won't know until you kind of go into production with it and do some testing on it. You might have to make okay. some changes during production. So. That's why it says right down there, prototype show, actual product, right. actual product must be there. All right, so we're catching. Yay! All right. Uh, May 2014, <coughs> with reveals. Oh my god, with reveals. Club figure. Oh no, we're not really set up battle line. All right, battle line. So there he is with King, uh, King Gray still on him, so he'll fit. Um, King and uh, so the armor, the mask, the foot armor will all be removable, and then you can snap that on the battle cat if you want to kind of make more of a 2000X My Young Productions battle cat. The battle cat armor will, but the saddle will fit on him, but obviously the mask will, because the mask is, battle cat's mask is made to fit on battle cat. <laughs> obviously battle lion has a much bigger head. The tail, uh, your paint job is the battle cat body, which is an amazing cat body. Uh, anything you guys, uh, anything on the battle line? Uh, silence is you. Actually, just the, the helmet might oh. fit. The helmet, battle, I, so battle oh, you're lion's saying, oh, I, helmet will fit battle cat. Battle, battle cat's helmet okay. will not fit battle okay. line. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so, it, you know, it works backwards and forwards, but not through time. So. All right. A little side note on that. When we were making the uh, the saddle and everything for it, uh, I had a King Grayskull out that I was putting on it, and my King Grayskull's hip actually broke when I was trying to put it on there, because it was one of the very first original ones where they had problems with the ankles and the hips, so now i got to go out to the warehouse and try to dig out another King Grayskull. Oh, or I can just fix it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now... Kamikaze is coming up in about two weeks, so we kind of had to split our reveals between both shows. So you know, please bear that in mind. Um, you know, that, uh, compared to last year, where we also didn't have that. But you guys have seen the first reveal of the show. There he is, the mighty extended. Yeah. 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 Green versus bronze. I guess like the yeah, old... all that was was a, a matter of uh, uh, Sherry, the wonderful young woman that does the paints for us, was using one of the original toys that we had in the studio to paint it, and nobody caught it before it went to, uh, before it went to photograph. So uh, the toy, I guess that gold color on the PVC hands over the years had kind of yellowed and turned kind of greenish for some reason. The rest of it was all gold, like in the original bin or bronze, mm -hmm. but that will be all for me. Yeah, well, yeah, that shouldn't be that hard to, especially if you already have that pink hat. So it's not yeah. that hard to just paint the hand the same color. Yeah. Make sure you make sure, email me on about that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll get, that should be too hard to get this. But yeah, so he comes a lot. He's got that shield that, that uh, articulates the four different panels. He's got his lance, and he's got one, two, three, four, five, six snap-on parts that will let him do his vintage extending feature. He is pretty much 100% new tool, except for maybe his hand, much less his hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so he doesn't... Well, is that actually the, the upper torso, that's armor pieces, so the upper torso is... Right? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. The upper torso is... Yeah, that's a shell. Oh, it's a shell. Yeah. Okay, so that's so, so T-Man, it's a normal male buck. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Extend on. All right. There he is. Next up in July. Wow, we're already like to July and it's October. So yeah, we're, we're blazing through 14. Here's our next big one for the club. Oh! Vlog! Woo! Yeah. So is the one he's going to come with uh, the filmation version of he Man's Sword Bear. Again, much like the staff of Avion. Totally unrelated to him, but a way to get that out there. Uh, and his little uh, whip accessory there is going to be, it's going to actually be a piece of string. Uh, here, it's, it's all plastic, just to kind of see what it looks like. So, at the end of his lance will be an actual piece of string, and then the uh, hook at the end will be plastic. He's a lot of individual dueling too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys want to talk about Senior Flog? Uh, this is one of my favorite new adventures I've been waiting to get to for a long time. Uh, he's yeah, one of the more main characters, and uh, I've always really liked this design, and so it was a great one where we could reuse some existing parts <coughs> and uh, mix and match some parts on it. If you look there, it's the first time that you can use uh, some more trooper parts on the, uh, the upper arm and the bicep. And uh, so he's with those type of pieces and the neat pieces. He's also very bulky. He's really, he's really a cool guy. Uh, and the, I'm assuming they'll make it this way through production. Uh, he set up the helmet is removable like the original. And thank goodness we were able to reuse those trap jaw lower legs again. <laughs> <laughs> I like to reuse them. Really, yeah. I think every figure. Every figure in 2015 <laughs> across the board. Give me Will. All right. Um, oh, we're, well, whatever year, 14 or 15, <laughs> he'll have trap jaw lower legs. <coughs> you heard it first. Yeah. All right, so we have a fan's choice book to talk about. So talk, speaking of new adventures, so obviously we did not have room for every new adventure figure. So these were kind of the top three characters that you guys wanted that we really didn't, we couldn't get all of them into the 14 or 15 line. <coughs> oh, we can't play this we rush down here after toy All right, we're gonna, um, you know what? Uh, Kim, are you here? <laughs> Kim, while we're doing the Q&A, can you run up there, get the tickets? That way as everyone leaves, they can vote. We forgot to bring the tickets down. Awesome, thank you. That's what happens when you do too many things in the morning. So as you guys leave, I'm gonna hand you a ticket and you'll be able to vote for one of these three figures. Um, and that figure will definitely not be a 14, this is a 15 line. Any questions? Tusker Dorf. Tusker So yes, that's Laura, Darius, and Tusker Dorf. Looking at for those of you who are not huge new adventure buffs. And uh, one, of the, one of them will be in the 2015 line. All right. And we announced at San Diego that we have a great new partnership between Mattel and Stanley's Power Entertainment. There's going to be a lot of awesome new, new stuff, ideas, projects, potential entertainment coming from the two of us commemorating this amazing partnership. Mattel's welcoming Stan Lee into the Mattel family with a commemorative action figure. And like I said in San Diego, we could have done a Stan Lee Hot Wheel. We could have done a Stan Lee Barbie doll. I don't know what that would have looked like. But <laughs> we decided we could do a Stan Lee Masters of the Universe figure. So oh. announcing, you've seen him at Comic Con. Standard! <laughs> so Standard is going to be available first at yeah, Kamikaze, which is two weeks. <laughs> um, and then after that on Maddie Collector, and uh, non-sub item. So, you know, did not take away budget from doing vlog or anything like that. He's got a removable helmet, removable glasses, and he's one of kind of the creator gods, the master of the universe. Uh, Stan helped with the bio. It was really, really, I mean, I didn't come to the door with him, but uh, yeah, it was like sculpting Stan in his head. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know, he's one of those icons. He's been around for, for I know, ever since he's been known comedy book. So, uh, what more can you say? Stan Lee. So welcome Stan Lee to uh, Master Standard, to Master of the Universe. We're 
a new line for 2014. So one of our other big, big reveals for this show is the Motu Minis. Woo! So this is yeah. not classics. This is not taking the place of classics figures. I've already seen people uh, posting online worried that if we're doing minis, it means that they're not getting more, more Motu Net classics. And no, that's not true. So it's an all new scale, the collector of fake Motu Heroes. <laughs> what are we laughing at? Alright, they all include accessories. The scale is slightly smaller compared to San Diego Comic Con, uh, which was a standalone video game item. These are not going to be tied to the video game the way the one Comic Con was. Uh, and essentially that was done for a couple of reasons. One, keep the price locked for at least the short term. Like I said in the beginning, prices are going up all the time. We want to make sure this line has legs and isn't costing you, you know, fifty dollars for a mini figure in a couple of years. We also wanted to include uh, play sets in this scale. So we were gonna have six sets in 2014, six two packs. Each two pack will have two figures and a piece of that castle gray skull with an opening jaw bridge. You can place the figures on top of the castle, behind it, um, and that way you could build up kind of a little diorama. They'll be $20 each with six packs to collect. They'll be available throughout 2014, only on Maddie Collector. They are not subscription, so they're just day of. They will be part of early access, so if you have a 2014 subscription, you will have first available access to these amazing toys. So you can see them already up on our booth, but just to refresh, you got Battle Armor He-Man with Roman there. We couldn't quite get the sword, but it'll actually go all the way to his hand. It's just a prototype, why it looks like it's sort of floating on top of his hand. And that will be followed up in quarter two by Battle Armor Skeletor and Austin. Yes, yes, you will. Nice. Hey, you guys want to do that? You spoke with these too. These are also horsemen. Teacher. Well, you know, we brought those uh, prototypes out to San Diego, I think, two years ago. And Mattel put these in the booth to gauge response on them. And, you know, overall, they seem to get a pretty positive response. And, uh, you know, then they kind of sat for a while. So to actually have this line going, we're thrilled about it. Um, we're, I think, we've got one figure left to do with this point out of the first, uh, first six two packs. And the line just keeps getting cooler and cooler as they go on. Um, just, you know, it, it's one that, with it being this small and at this cheaper size, um, it's just going to be a great collectible line. It's, it's got to be a big quality because we just want to see more and more of these characters uh, in this side. So, um, you know, they're, they're really cool. Not only characters, this line is really successful. I like to see, you know, little chunks of the game just replace that. <laughs> Oversized mini figures. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah. So, and that's why we, we did bring them down a little bit so we could do that kind of stuff. You know, the smaller they are, the more people do the bigger items because then the bigger items are big. And then there's a high price point. I can also tell you guys I know you saw some prototypes of these a few years ago. There are characters coming out 14 you kind of see yet. So, that were not like sort of yeah, that preview showed a few years ago. So, there are surprises coming. Alright, Battle Armor Skeletor versus Moss Man. And that castle. So that jaw bridge will open and comes apart in six pieces. Uh, figures can go on both the towers, the top, and there's sort of like little playroom on the reverse. Uh, and it's really cool. So we hope to do more things like this. What do you guys think? Like it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All new way to collect Master of the Universe. All right, I'll blaze to these, but we got some color images now of those mini comic characters that Axel was nice enough to color for us. There's Bandwidth and Red Shadow for the first time in color. There's the Great Black Wizard, Bangor, <laughs> Mechanic of the Snake Man. So his, we always think like his vintage big action feature would have been uh, the uh, Fang, because I couldn't get it out. Nick Gladiator from the second mini comic. And then here's a cool one. This was an actual, this was Wellington uh, when we were putting Skeleton in there. That, that was the original version of Skeleton, and the top there on his little motorcycle from the vintage style guide that never happened. 
and then Axel kind of reimagined him based on that illustration to appear in the mini comic. So there you guys go, a, uh, a sneak peek at behind the scenes, the design of all new characters from the mini comics. Those kiss inspired boots on skeleton there as well are pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was all well. He was like, that. he said, hey, take this, but kind of, you know, take it out. I think he did. And I love the mohawk and the kind of the karate kid skull mask. But it's not a skull of the mask. All right. Yes. Oh. All right. Oh. So, talk to me, man. Hey. Oh, that's 